Hi, this is a quick video to show off Microsoft's mesh component working with tessellation. So I have a basic rock here and uh, it's got some splat maps uh, from one of my textures painted onto it. And what we're going to do is turn on uh, tessellation. So I'm going to start at the beginning here. Um, what you're going to notice with tessellation is that uh, depending on how your mesh is built, it may actually uh, pull your mesh apart. So here we see some cracking going on, and this happens for a number of reasons. The first is if you have UVs which are non-continuous, and so it jumps to somewhere else in the texture, well, then it's going to get a very different height value, and it's going to uh, the two vertices which were on top of each other are now going to get pushed different height values. So that's one very common reason. Another is if you have hard edges, because when you have a hard edge, the normals don't uh, face the right direction. So essentially anywhere you have splits in your mesh, uh, you're likely to get some kind of cracking. Now there is a technique to fix this um, at the uh, code level, um, but it requires the use of PN triangles, which are uh, really only good for like characters and things like that. They're not good for structures. Uh, so I don't like that solution. It also doesn't work on every graphics API. Uh, it has to be coded uh, individually for some of them. Um, so that makes it not viable for all platforms. So rather than doing that, I have a thing called displacement dampening. And I've already got a map here, but I'll show you what it would look like when you first start it. So if you turn that feature on and you go to the displacement tab here, you can paint how much displacement is added to each area. If I clear that paint job, you'll see that we are um, cracking, you know, once again. Now we could go and find all the spots where this happens, and we could uh, manually uh, paint dampening there, um, you know, with a brush, and pull the mesh back together. But that's kind of painful. Uh, it takes a lot of time. You might miss stuff because you can't always see it from certain angles. And, um, and so that's pretty error prone. So what I did was I created a script that fixes some of the most common uh, errors of this. And that's really not when, uh, when you have hard angles, but when you have um, discontinuities in your UV map. And so uh, what this does is it finds all the edges of the UVs, uh, basically the UV charts, and then it will um, uh, dampen those areas and blur it a little bit to make it a nice kind of clean um, transition. And so you can control the size uh, of the area and then how much blur is provided. Um, and then you can just hit auto generate from UV chart. And in the case of something like this, you can see it seamed it all up nicely for us. And then you save this texture. You can see that this is actually what the texture looks like. It looks like our UV chart and all the edges around the UV chart have been blurred and dampened so that uh, we don't have any cracking going on. Um, now there's some other controls that you get here. Uh, we're in the combined mode, so uh, we're combining our uh, splat maps with normal maps that are from the main texture of the object. So some of these controls are only in combined mode. Um, if you just have splat maps, you wouldn't have uh, some of these controls because you don't have an underlying map. And if you're using the uh, overlay mode, which allows you to blend with an existing shader, well, it doesn't know anything about the underlying shader, and so tessellation just doesn't work there because uh, you can't tessellate the underlying shader, and so it wouldn't line up. Um, so let's go and look at some of these properties I'm about to talk about. So if we come down here into our, tes into our um, mesh combined section, just like we have this normal blend, we also have a tessellation blend. And what this does is blend between uh, the object tessellation uh, that's provided by that combined map and then the splat map tessellation. Um, and so this is only tessellating where there's splat maps and using the splat map height texture. Uh, normally you want this around 0.5. Uh, and then there's some very important controls that I think a lot of people miss, especially when they're trying to do physics. Um, so you have a tessellation offset here. And what this does is for the global texture is offset the tessellation. So if your average uh, tessellation amount was 0.5, uh, 
uh, then you have a very centered height map, but you often don't have a centered height map. And so um, by uh, hitting the center button, it will go through that texture, it will figure out the average value and offset the tessellation by half of that value down so that white parts go up and black parts go down. And so that helps center the um, tessellation. There, this is also available for the actual um, per texture um, uh, splat map uh, height fields. And so if we go to the, uh, where is it here, displacement, um, sorry, we want the test offset. Um, that will uh, give us values for each texture that we can do. We can compute the ideal value on the current texture, or we can compute them all, and it'll go through all of these textures uh, that we have in our splat map array and figure out what the ideal value for each one is to keep that centered. And so that will help if you're if you're dealing with physics, it helps you get more tessellation before it looks bad from the intersections um, and uh, helps the surface stay closer to the original uh, surface that you're probably using physics on. And the uh, last thing you probably want to do is turn up bias off. The reason is if we have up bias um, all the way on, then basically all these things are being uh, uh, displaced upwards. And on a mesh, you usually don't want to displace everything upwards. You usually want to displace it in the direction of the normal uh, so you're not just smearing your object upwards. Um, so you probably want to set that to zero in most cases. And uh, otherwise, tessellation works uh, just like it does on terrain. It has the mean max distances and all of that stuff. Um, so with this, you can kind of control uh, your overall tessellation. And then finally, uh, the thing I want to show is that that displacement dampening texture that we auto-generated, we can go and edit that if we decide that like, hey, you know, this bump is just way too big. And so what we can do is set the target value to something, um, I'm going to say like 0.8 so that it will dampen it 80% uh, when I paint here. And um, here's my brush, here's my brush. Little tiny brush, let me make it a little bit bigger. Grab this guy. And then we can dampen that tessellation right there or wherever we want. And so you can go in and kind of tweak how much uh, displacement you're getting in each area uh, to make it not so uh, bumpy if you decide that, like, you know, this area is just too much. Or maybe if you're doing a game with a path and the player's only allowed on the path, you could actually dial down the tessellation just on that object so that it never intersects the feet. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the video.